Hello, you are watching Shalom World News. I am Rory McLennan coming to you from Glasgow, Scotland. Here are the latest headlines from around the world. A member of the House of Lords in the UK has decried the tepid response of leaders and nations to the persecution of 250 million Christians around the globe. In a blog post on Tuesday, Lord David Alton of Liverpool paid glowing tribute to Ghanaian national Matthew Ayariga, who chose to die alongside 20 Egyptian Coptic Christians while in the captivity of Islamic State militants in Libya seven years ago. The parliamentarian said that Ayariga's extraordinary act of love and solidarity is a rebuke to all those who are silent in the face of the persecution of Christians. Lord Alton also said in his blog post that the faith and sacrifice of the 21 martyrs should not be forgotten. The 21 men who were migrant workers in Libya were executed by the militants on the shores of the Mediterranean on February the 15th in 2015 for refusing to renounce Christianity. On Tuesday, Christians around the globe, including Coptic believers, commemorated the 7th anniversary of their heroic martyrdom. Although Malta is something of a lone voice in supporting the rights of the unborn in the European Union, it has never buckled under pressure to legalise abortion. Indeed, once again, the Mediterranean island nation has reiterated its commitment to protecting innocent lives. Against the backdrop of the Council of Europe's Human Rights Commissioner Dunja Mijatovic, urging Maltese authorities to allow abortions in the country, Malta has stated that it disagrees with the interpretation that the right to sexual and reproductive health services include an intrinsic right to abortion. The government also made it clear that there were no registered deaths or complications following birth over the past decade, adding that if the mother's life is in danger, all efforts are made to save her life as well as the unborn baby. In Malta, all abortions are illegal and there are no exceptions, even if the health or life of the mother is in peril. In the US state of New Mexico, a Catholic church known for its beautiful stained glass windows was vandalised on February the 14th. In the early hours of Monday, a man pelted chunks of concrete at several stained glass windows of St. Therese Church in Albuquerque. A grounds manager who was inside the church at the time alerted the police to report what he thought were gunshots. The culprit, named Jet Doe, was soon arrested and was charged with hiding his identity, resisting or refusing to obey an officer, and criminal mischief of over $1,000. However, according to the vicar of the parish, Father Vincent Paul Chavez, the damage caused is estimated to be nearly $100,000. The exquisite windows are part of 34 stained glass windows created in France in 1954, just before the church's opening in December of 1955. In addition, the church was honoured with a New Mexico highway marker for its artistic and architectural value. According to reports, the attacker also damaged some of the church's clay roof tiles. In Pakistan, attacks on people belonging to minority communities, especially Christians, are on the rise. In the latest incident, a Christian youth was killed by a mob in the city of Lahore on February the 14th. 25-year-old Peres Masi was clubbed to death by a group of Muslims. After killing him, they fired shots into the air and left the scene. According to Asia News, Mr Masi was killed following a dispute. Although a complaint has been filed with the local police station, the United Christian Council has said that the police are powerless and insecure. In Muslim-majority Pakistan, Christians often face attacks as well as incarceration after being charged under the notorious blasphemy law. If found guilty in court, they can be sentenced even to death. Furthermore, young Christian women, especially teenagers, are victims of abduction, sexual assault, conversion to Islam and forced marriage. According to rights organisations, in many cases the police favour Muslim abductors rather than Christian families. Cardinal Malcolm Ranjit of Sri Lanka has condemned the arrest of a prominent Catholic activist and expressed concern over the threat to freedom of expression. Activist Shehan Malaka Gamaj was taken into custody by the Criminal Investigation Department of the Police while walking on the road on Monday. While live streaming the dramatic arrest, the activist was seen demanding the document warranting his arrest from individuals in civilian clothing who came in a white van. On Tuesday, the cardinal slammed the arrest, calling it an abduction. He blamed the government for targeting people who criticise its failure to undertake a proper probe into the 2019 Easter Sunday terrorist attacks that left more than 200 people dead and scores more injured. 
Meanwhile, spokesperson for the police Nihal Taldua told the media that Gamage was detained due to a comment concerning the terror attacks he had supposedly made recently. He added that the activist was arrested on the advice of the Attorney General. Emphasising the worth of grandparents and the elderly for society and ecclesial communities, the Holy Father Pope Francis has come out with the theme for the Second World Day of Grandparents. This year's theme is In Old Age They Will Still Bear Fruit, and it is a call to review attitudes towards grandparents and the elderly who are frequently marginalised in families, civil and ecclesial communities. Sunday, July the 24th of this year, will be commemorated as the Second World Day for Grandparents and the Elderly across the Global Catholic Church. Furthermore, the Dicastery for Laity, Family and Life said that the theme reflecting Psalm 92.15 emphasises the need to listen to the contributions of the elderly to have a better world. In 2021, Pope Francis instituted the World Day of Grandparents and the Elderly, which is commemorated on the fourth Sunday of July, close to the Feast of Saints Joachim and Anne, the Grandparents of Jesus. Meanwhile, this year the annual World Day for Grandparents and the Elderly falls alongside the 10th World Meeting of Families in Rome. Believers of the ancient Church of the East, which is an offshoot of the Assyrian Church of the East, are mourning the death of their patriarch Mar Adai II. The 74-year-old head of the church passed away on February the 11th. Upon heeding of the death of Mar Adai II, the spiritual leader of the Assyrian Church of the East, Patriarch Mar Awa III, sent a letter of condolence. The ancient Church of the East includes around 77,000 believers and is headquartered in Baghdad in Iraq. It broke off from the Assyrian Church of the East in 1969, when several prelates and clergymen who were upset with the modernising efforts of Patriarch Shimon XXII elected Bishop Thomas Darmo as Patriarch of their faction. The new Patriarch led the believers who were dissatisfied with the shortening of the Lenten fast and the adoption of the Gregorian calendar for major feasts. After the death of Patriarch Darmo in 1970, Mar Adai II was elected as his successor during his tenure, he strove hard to normalise ties with the Assyrian Church. May he rest in peace. In a rare move, the Central American nation of Costa Rica has honoured Pope St John Paul II with honorary citizenship. Marking the event, a portrait of the Polish pontiff was unveiled at the Costa Rica Legislative Assembly on February the 10th. An initiative promoted by the deputy and head of the Christian Social Republican Party, Otto Roberto Vargas Víquez, the declaration of honorary citizenship for Pope John Paul II, Karol Wojtyla, was approved by the Legislative Assembly on August 11th last year. The Pope had visited the country in March in 1983, becoming the first pontiff to do so. It was the miraculous healing of Costa Rican national Donna Floribet Mora from a serious aneurysm through the intercession of Pope John Paul II that paved the way for his canonization. Speaking during the ceremony, the President of the Episcopal Conference, José Manuel Garita, said that, quote, this honour granted by the Legislative Assembly of Costa Rica revives the striking figure of St. John Paul II. And those are your latest headlines. Do join us again tomorrow. In the meantime, you can visit swnews.org for more updates. Shalom.